the shocking thing was the State Department last night on this conference call, we weren't invited to it. They say it was an oversight. We pointed that out last night. Uh, they say everything is calm. The ambassador walks the Tur Turkish diplomat essentially out to the road. There's nobody there. They don't see anybody on the video. The security people are saying it's been like that all day. Nobody's around. Nothing unusual all day long. As Steve points out, this official says they talk all the way through the attack. They talk after the attack. Six hours long this attack took. And they have all of this information, and yet five days later, Susan Rice goes out on five TV shows and doesn't have that information, yet these people do. It's, it's such a disconnect. It's beyond a disconnect. That is utterly damning. There are two scandals going on here. The first is the cover-up. When we now know, and, we, and they knew earlier, there was no mob, there was no demonstration, there was no incentive about the video. That was all completely false story. This was simply an attack of our men who infiltrated and killed our people. So everything Susan Rice said was a confection. It was an invention. And it was, as you showed, it was repeated again and again. You had Hillary Clinton speaking about the video as though the body of the ambassador was lying next to her. Then you had Susan Rice spinning the tales. You have the President of the United States addressing the General Assembly more than two weeks later talking about the video, the insult to Islam, etc. You have this entire story going all along. They're trying to sell the video. They're trying to sell extremism. And they're trying to sell all of this at the time when they know it isn't true. So that's number one. And that's a scandal, and I think it has to do with the fact that they were spiking the football over the, the death of bin Laden and al-Qaeda a week earlier in Charlotte, and this was a contradiction of it. The second scandal is the lack of security at the site before. So what happened before? And I think that what happened was the administration, it wasn't a lack of money that they would, uh, withdrew all the support, and they didn't put up the required barbed wire and the fences and all that. It was under the theory, which starts with Obama at the beginning, we don't want to be intruders in the era. We don't want to be oppositional. We don't want to have a fortress in America. We, want no, we don't want to look imperialist. We want to blend in with the people and help them build. That's a noble aspiration. And that was the motive for having very light security. But it was a catastrophically wrong decision to do it in Benghazi, in a no man's land, in Dodge City. And it cost us the lives of the ambassador and three other Americans. They tried to jump on this statement, uh, Charles, that, that he made to the Des Moines Register editorial board. Mitt Romney saying there's no legislation with regards to abortion that I'm familiar with that would become a part of my agenda, uh, suggesting that he's trying to moderate on abortion. Uh, the Romney spokeswoman, Andrea Saul, saying Mitt Romney is proudly pro-life and he will be a pro-life president, tried to drive a wedge in there, and Mitt Romney uh, kind of saying that's not going to happen. There is no wedge. There's nothing there there. What, what Romney is saying is, I have an agenda on abortion, I will shape it, I will make the legislation, and here are what my positions are. There's no contradiction. I think if you look at the polls, and the, a 16-point flip among independents uh, towards Romney, you've got to say, as opposed to what Mara said, it's not a foot in the door, he's got a full leg, two arms, half a torso, and a head. Uh, that's my medical opinion anyway. So I, I think he really made incredible advances here. And it's up to Obama to reverse them. I don't know if he can.